Good evening. I'm Reverend Elisa, the deacon at First United Methodist Church of Mount Clemens. I'm glad to be with you this evening to bring you a, mess a message of blessing in this time of Lent, to remember that we are blessed and to remember why we are blessed. I take my reading this evening from Romans chapter 4, verses 6 through 13. So also David speaks of the blessedness of those to whom God reckons righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one against whom the Lord will not reckon sin. Is this blessedness then pronounced only on the circumcised or also on the uncircumcised? We say faith was reckoned to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it reckoned to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after, but before he was circumcised. He received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him the ancestor of all who believe without being circumcised, and who thus have righteousness reckoned to them and likewise the ancestor of the circumcised, who are not only circumcised, but who also follow the example of the faith that our ancestor Abraham had before he was circumcised. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. This evening we talk about blessing and I have to admit, I have a problem with this word. My difficulty is twofold. The casualness with which we use this word in our culture and the feeling of unworthiness surrounding God's blessing. The first involves a lack of true understanding of blessing. And the second includes an understanding that God is bigger than us. Over the years, I have become sensitive to how our American culture views and talks about blessing. We bless people after they sneeze. In the South where I grew up, bless your heart can mean something very positive or in most cases is a veiled insult. We sing God bless America almost as if we are the only ones God blesses. For me, worst of all, our discussions about how blessed we are to, quote, live in the greatest country in the world, end quote. These examples are the very, at the very least, convey the notion that God's blessing is something we can pass along to others, and at worst, is something we are somehow entitled to receive based simply on the country in which we live. I think both miss the point of this passage in Romans and our misunderstanding of God's blessing. Paul points out Abraham's faith reckoned him to God, and God's blessing was upon him. It wasn't because of who Abraham was, where Abraham lived, or even because of Abraham's works that he received the blessing of a great name or numerous descendants. No, he received this blessing because he was faithful to God. Which brings me to the second reason why I have trouble with this word blessing, unworthiness. Beginning with Ash Wednesday, we spend the season of Lent focused on confession, repentance, and forgiveness. In this process comes a recognition that we are unworthy to receive God's blessing, and yet God offers it anyway. God offered Abraham blessing based on faith. And God offers us the same blessing. We are blessed, but nothing in our lives, material wealth, station in life, or country of residence points to that blessing. That blessing comes only from the love and grace of God, given freely, because we, like Abraham, are people of faith. Let us pray. God of all, during this season of Lent, during this time of chaos and news that troubles our minds, help us to remember 
your blessing. Trouble our hearts and challenge our ideas around blessing and teach us to recognize our unworthiness so we will understand more fully your overwhelming love and grace as we prepare for Easter, renew our faith, restore our hope, and redeem our spirit to live the life given to us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope you are all well. I hope you are staying healthy. And I wish blessing and love to all of your families. Remember our church service tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live. Good night.